Tell me a little bit more about how Pine Community School works. Give a sense of like how how is conflict resolved, how are decisions made, and and what kind of what are the decisions that the kids get to make that you know may, yep. may not be common to other schools. There's lots of things that are in common with other democratic schools. Obviously, we use conflict re- transformation, not resolution, mm. but conflict mm-hmm. mapping processes. We're really big on MVC. Mm-hmm. Um, so mm-hmm. we're an MVC school. Our, uh, we, our teachers are all trained. We provide a lot of support for our parents to use those mm-hmm. kind of frameworks and for our students to use those kind of frameworks micro circles, restorative justice. So those are the things, active listening, all of those things Mm -hmm. feed into our our program. Lots of work in that area. Um, In terms of the decision-making, we have, like a lot of schools, we have whole school meeting, we have class meetings, we have input into the the parents run the school as a board, Mm. they run the school. So they're involved in hiring, firing, budgeting, all of that stuff. So parents have a say, kids have a say, teachers have a say. With the whole school meeting, I will add that I've been working at Pine since we were smaller and Mm. to bigger, and we have changed. We have evolved our practices with whole school meetings. We've in probably in recent years leaned a lot into sociocracy practices, Mm. Mm -hmm. and we've done something in the last two years that's been really interesting and exciting for us with our kids to use the whole school meeting as a funnel to kind of approve decisions but lots of decisions are being done more in small subgroups and circles Mm -hmm. using the circle Mm -hmm. structure and the kids choose circles and these circles are very organic and and are formed as needed but they're all involved in something in some circles and they can move between circles so that we can have those smaller group discussions and hear all the voices much more easily it just becomes a bit unwieldy and a bit when you have a hundred voices all at once and you're really trying to hear all those voices, there's some practical stuff that becomes hard and it right. becomes, we were, we were noticing a lot of tyranny of the majority of those louder voices coming through. Mm-hmm. And we wanted to find mechanisms that allowed us to still make sure that all our decisions are ratified by the entire community, mm. but that we're not spending hours and the efficiency, right. the efficiency is really important to us. Like we've mm-hmm. got, super efficient little kids who want to get back to playing. (laughs) So we tried to, we've been playing with our meeting structures a little bit and that's been really, really successful. We've had some incredible um, groups that all the groups are really strong and the kids take ownership, but because we have a really long-term culture that the kids are making the decisions that they are able to know that they can jump in and out of these circles, but everyone's got their passion circle at any given Mm. time. And we make time every two weeks for there to be time to report back to the whole school meeting and time to talk in your circles and time to move forward your issues and your agendas in those spaces. At the moment, we've got like a gardening circle, an environmental sustainability circle. There's a technology circle. There's, playground circle there was a handball circle that just finished up that was a very very loudly powerful group that <laughs> quali- got, got our handball rules because we've been having a lot of conflict in the handball space mm. and that took maybe six or seven weeks for them to listen and hear everyone and the circles will also do use other mechanisms um, we use a lot of uh, surveying google class like google forms for those who, who like to use technology surveying or physically going around and asking people they'll have meetings they'll have performances they'll find a lot of ways to gather feedback and then present this is what the handball rules are to the group and the funny thing about the handball rules so they've worked all this they've worked all these issues and they'd heard all these voices and they've got the rules all sorted and so they printed them and laminated them next to the handball courts and mm-hmm. handball was great for many weeks and then we had a whole bunch of teenagers come back from who had been at Pine years ago and they were playing handball. Um, I know because my, my son was one of them. They came back for a, D, a D&D group and they were looking at these rules and they were going, what is this? These rules, these aren't how we play. What's this backseat? <laughs> like, and they just totally were dissing on them. And I'm like, yeah, but it's these guys' rules for now, this culture for right. now. You go make your own rules in your own space. Yeah, um, yeah. So, yeah, the, the groups have been working really well. We've been really excited by that. And the teachers have been really enthused by having that professional development in sociocracy and bringing Mm. that into 
their practices. The little kids, no. I have to say, our groups, our kids run the best met class meetings. We've still got uh-huh. 40, we've got 40 kids in our group and our kids are tight. They're just like, nope, we've got to get on with this. Come on, play. Yep, I'm going to take six, <laughs> six opinions before we fishbowl and all sorts of things. It's really fun. No, yeah. no. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Burr.